matter globally? Well, it's an opportunity for us to sit down with uh, leaders, pioneers, uh, true uh, inspirations in the field of renewable, renewable, sustainable, affordable and clean energy. Um, SDG7, and the acronym that so many of you will be aware of, uh, references the Sustainable Development Goals 7, as laid out by the United Nations Global Assembly back in 2015, part of a 17-part programme moving forward to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable and modern energy for all. And um, that access is being like any other region around the world, but real innovation being brought to bear. So we thought we'd take the opportunity to sit down with individuals uh, who've taken it upon themselves to lead that charge at the moment. And we're joined uh, for this edition of What Matters Globally by none other than the founder and the CEO of Yellow Door Energy, Jeremy Crane, joins us. Jeremy, bless you. Thanks for your time and thanks for being with us. Thanks, Tom. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, listen, um, uh, many of uh, our viewers out there at the moment uh, will have heard uh, of your extraordinary company, will have known the brand. But give us the, the elevator pitch, if you like, and our elevated position down here to, to what Yellow Door Energy is and does. Look, okay, uh, boiling it down, we supply energy to businesses. We do it in a less expensive, more sustainable, more reliable way than has been traditionally available from utilities. We focus on emerging markets, places where energy is constrained or simply not available to businesses. And, and through that, we see them being able to grow and prosper in a way that certainly meets SDG 7. Yeah. Um, and we're going to deal in that. We're going to deal with that a lot now. Affordable and clean energy is going to be the focus of our, our conversation, um, taking a real sort of regional view on it, if we can. Because who better to ask about the issue that is solar energy? Because how many of my friends think that the whole of Dubai is basically run on solar? You live in the desert. Of course you've got solar energy. That's what it's all about, surely. Look, we all are aware that energy and the technology to bring solar energy to bear is increasing rapidly. However, I want to hear from you and the challenges that you faced. How, how's it been starting a solar business here uh, in the Middle East, in a region that is renowned for its sun, its solar power here? Um, and what advice, if any, can you proffer to, to others in a similar boat out there, other entrepreneurs, others looking to get into, in, into the industry? Um, about the opportunities that have, do, or could exist here in the region? Well, it's, it's interesting. Um, so we're five years old. So we started in a period where our industry was really just a fledgling here. 2015, in the Middle East, solar was just starting to be rolled out. Um, and it certainly hadn't reached villas or, or businesses in any meaningful way. Um, but. It, it has progressed rapidly. And that's one of the great things about this region is yeah. it does change and evolve so fast. And so we have a great resource, Sun. We have uh, capital that we can invest in this resource and, and it's been great. Now, as far as starting a business here, that's that's been a really interesting journey as well. So five years ago, I would say that the, the ecosystem for starting businesses was in its, in its infancy. Mm. Uh, we, we've obviously seen some great successes in the region, uh, you know, Kareem comes to mind um, and, uh, and that's, that's been a pioneer for, for many of us. We've tried to follow in those footsteps. Um, but that has also evolved over the last five years and today there's a whole bunch of incubators out there that are helping businesses get going. There's a huge initiative to, to make the ease of business uh, much, much uh, much more streamlined yeah. for people who are starting. So I think somebody who's starting a business today, 2020, is um, you know five steps ahead of where we were a few years ago. And, and I think it's really encouraging. I think there's three things that I'd look at if I was starting a business today in, in the Middle East. One is partners. Can you find the right capital, the right, uh, sorry, the right leadership team that's going to help you mm. structure and, and drive your business forward? And yes, we have great access to the human capital here. The second would be um, would be funding and ability access to that. Well, there's a whole bunch of funds for, for startups, for innovation, and, and so, so that's fantastic. And then the third is ideas, and well, there's lots of ideas. You just gotta find the right one, <laughs> you can make it happen. 
Just on that point, and just to pick you up on ideas um, before we get back to SDG 7, I mean, have we seen an acceleration of ideas during these tough times? You know, uh, I, I've got a scorecard going at work at the moment with the number of times we say unprecedented or uncertain or, or whatever, but they are, yeah. and they have been tough times. But have they accelerated creativity? Have they accelerated ideas? Um, perhaps being locked at home has given people more time to think. Um, I don't know. I think we're seeing uh, we're seeing different people step forward to solve the crisis, to meet the crisis, yeah. and and I think it really is also creating some separation, a wheat in the shaft type of idea for those who are resilient that can get through this period. And that's one of the things you see through any period of struggle is some people survive and thrive and go on to be much more successful, mm. and others not so much. So. It'll be interesting to see what comes out of this. So to that end and taking that into account, and I just want to get a, a bit of a progress report, if we can, on all things sustainability here. Um, slowly but surely, maybe momentum is picking up in terms of progress when it comes towards SDG 7 goals at the moment and the achievement therein. Um, obviously, it's been a tough time for so many. Encouraging signs, certainly out there at the moment, that energy is becoming more sustainable and I think, uh, possibly correct me if I'm wrong, more widely available to others. Certainly we're seeing more evidence of that. But with that to one side and with all the examples that you can bring to bear, is enough fundamentally being done now? Or, just to use that word of acceleration again, is there further scope to accelerate the all-important energy transition? Look, I think it really varies by country. Yeah. So, you know, in, in, in the UAE, we're, we're blessed to have a fantastic access to energy, virtually 100% access to energy here. So that's, that's not the question. But the question is in neighboring countries. So, so we're very active in Pakistan right now. Mm. In Pakistan, about 71% of the population has access to electricity. And, and that's really where this, where this um, sustainability goal is, is focused. What about that other 29%? that don't have access to, to electricity for lighting, for charging their phones, for all the basic things that we take for granted. Um, that uh, another market we're looking at, Nigeria, it's, it's, it's much less than that, that access. So where we see there being um, great potential is to leapfrog the, the, the rollout of distribution networks, which are generally government driven, where governments don't have the capability or capital to do so and provide energy directly where it's needed hmm. right so an example we're working with a textiles company in Pakistan yeah. um, looking to provide them with about 15 megawatts of, of power to run their factory right now they're bringing in uh, conventional fuels running their factory and by re by switching them to solar we're not only significantly reducing their cost we're also making them more resilient to changing in fuel prices, um, enabling them to access um, the markets, the uh, developed markets that are demanding that they do their manufacturing in a more sustainable manner. Mm. So it's a, it's a very positive way to give access to them for energy in a, in a way that they didn't previously have. So I'm going to be unfair here, and I'm going to scale, because we've been talking about scale uh, throughout the course of our afternoon together. Um, uh, and big thanks to you for being uh, one of the jurors recently for the Living Business uh, series here. Really appreciate your, your help with that one. Um, but in terms of scale, okay, and again, forgive me if my numbers are wrong, but I've tried to crunch the numbers. Reckoning around about 789 million people um, is the number we're putting on uh, the sort of population predominantly in the sub-Saharan African regions, which have little or no access to electricity. And if they do have that access to electricity, like you've just been saying with those other case studies and scenarios, um, it's not reliable. It's unreliable as well, or limited at the best of times. So uh, from where you sit uh, and from being an ambassador for all things solar, how can solar help address that fundamental issue? Well, you know what? The way that we look at it is very much like the mobile phone versus landlines, right? So in the 20 years ago, for somebody in a remote part of, um, of, of Southern Af Sub-Saharan Africa yeah. to get access to communication, they, they had to walk 10 kilometers to the nearest village where there was a phone line. Today, they have a mobile phone, 
presto, right? It's the same thing with solar. We can generate solar power where it's needed, on a factory's rooftop, backyard, down the street, and, and provide them power there without the need for that transmission line to be built to that village, or for them to rely on that power plant that's 100 kilometers away that they have no control over. So by being able to generate um, where they need it, it, it really unlocks those barriers that, that are incumbent to the emerging markets. It's a fascinating chapter. I, I wish we had longer. I wish I could talk to you all night long. But as you can see, the sun has set behind us and uh, we must away. Uh, listen, really appreciate you uh, agreeing to uh, be our first guest on What Matters Globally. Uh, congratulations for the extraordinary success of Yellow Door Energy. Uh, that was Jeremy Crane, the founder and the CEO of Yellow Door Energy. Jeremy, thank you so much indeed for your time. Our thanks to uh, Jeremy. Thanks to each and every one of you. Jeremy was the first guest uh, of what matters globally. Uh, keep yourself locked on to social uh, to find out about forthcoming and future guests and uh, forthcoming episodes. But for now, from all the team down here, thanks very much indeed. And from what matters globally, good night.